Now to what we're learning about the Hamas leader believed to be the mastermind of Saturday's surprise attacks. Ian Panel is near the Gaza border with those details. Good morning, Ian. Yeah, good morning, George. I don't know if you can hear, but we've got Israeli attack helicopters overhead. We're seeing fighter jets and regular plumes of smoke emerging from the Gaza Strip behind me, where Israel continues its retaliation for Saturday's attacks. This morning, Gaza under total siege, whole neighborhoods being wiped out. Israel retaliating for the terrifying deadly assault by Hamas says it's targeting terrorists, but civilians now caught in the crossfire. Over 780 people killed in three days, at least 140 of them children, according to Gaza's health ministry. Dazed residents facing a fourth day of retaliatory attacks from Israeli fighter jets, as Hamas still hits Israeli cities, something we witnessed firsthand. We just had the air raid siren. There you go, you can hear the sound of an explosion. The militant group Hamas, controlling the Gaza Strip since 2007, one of the most densely populated places on the planet. Living conditions were already desperate, with over half the population in poverty. Israel imposing a blockade since Hamas took over, but now, after that deadly attack in Israel, it's cutting water, electricity and food. A lot of Palestinians uh, will blame, of course, their situation on Israel's blockade, uh, but but also have become frustrated over the years with Hamas's inability to find a, a, a way out for Gaza's uh, suffering. Hamas is an Islamist movement prescribed as a terrorist group by Israel and the U.S. Its military wing, the Al-Qassam Brigade, killed at least 900 Israelis this week. Its leader is Mohammed Daif. Speaking shortly after the assault, in shadow, saying the people claim their revolution. Israel's been trying to track him down for years, reportedly making several attempts to assassinate him. As far as we know, he's very severely wounded, but still at least nominally in command of the military wing. There's not much intelligence on what he's doing. If there was, of course, Israel would have already taken him out. Now, fears growing about the war's escalation. Hamas calling on its allies, the militant group Hezbollah in Lebanon and Iran, which supports them both to join the Battle of Gaza. Well, we're now seeing all the signs that Israel is preparing a large-scale land operation. We're seeing tanks, armoured vehicles, men and munitions moving into the area. And life was already very difficult for people inside the Gaza Strip. But this blockade, these new restrictions are being imposed, have been imposed for the very first time. The UN and others are expressing concern about the safety of Israeli citizens and Palestinian uh, citizens. But the reality is, if those tanks roll in across the border into Gaza, then the threat for collateral damage, for civilian deaths, are only going to grow. George. Okay, and thanks. And let's bring in our military analyst, Steve Gannon. Steve, let's pick up where Ian just left off. Israel calling up 300,000 reservists, their largest uh, call up ever. We've got the tanks massing on the border. What does a ground incursion look like? Um, that's hard to say, George, because we don't know what the intent will be. Uh, it could be in a, a punitive expedition, go in and root out uh, as, Hamas as much uh, as they can. Uh, I don't think it'll be a full takeover of Gaza, two million people. It's a large area, and the Israeli Defense Force can't afford to commit that much. So we'll watch how the buildup occurs around Gaza, and then we'll be able to, to, uh, to see what the uh, actual intent of the invasion will be. Steve, as Ian said, the United States and Israel have labeled Hamas a terrorist group, but for years there was also this belief that somehow we could work with Hamas to administer Gaza. Of course, that seems to be out the window now. What do you make of this change in tactics by Hamas? Yeah, they've, they've really uh, evolved, uh, and Netanyahu actually called them ISIS today. So uh, the group has evolved over time. Remember, we talked about why this intelligence uh, failure occurred. One of those elements was complacency, but it was also deception. Hamas was able to deceive the uh, Israelis into a sense of complacency by not attacking Israel for over two years by keeping the gates open so that migrant workers could come in and out of Israel. And so Israel moved more troops up towards the West Bank. They've also shown uh, an ability to do complex operations that we haven't seen in the past. We'd see them do individual things like paragliders or, or seaborne attacks, but this is the first time we saw them bring it all together. And on top of that, the potential coordination with the IRGC, with Quds Force, and with Hezbollah shows a sophistication that we had never seen out of Hamas. What's difficult to figure out, though, Steve, is Hamas's endgame in all this. They had to have known that an attack like this would spark a massive, massive retaliation by Israel. That seems uh, to be coming. So what do they hope to gain? 
Yeah, that's hard to say, George. You think about it. Is, is it prestige among terrorist groups? Is it standing? Is it more support from Iran? Uh, but they may have overstepped, uh, as you note, at this point, because it will give the Israelis the reason to go in and eliminate them as a terrorist group. But I think we also need to ask Israel, what is their intent? So we've heard Netanyahu talk about how he's going to remake the Middle East. He's talking about we are at war. But what does that mean? What is the end state? What does victory look like? He's going to be asking for great sacrifices from the Israeli people here in the days and weeks to come. And he's going to need to explain to them what final victory will look like. And your view on whether Hezbollah is going to really open up this second front? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a danger, George, because uh, I think that if uh, Israel goes after Iran, they've said they will if they find complicity in this attack. If they go after Iran, Hezbollah will be forced to attack from the north. So this is a very dangerous period. First time that we've ever seen Israel and Iran come this close to blows. And if that happens, it may go from a one-front war in Gaza to a three-front war. Steve Gannier, thanks very much. Robin? Such a dangerous period, mm -hmm. as he said. You're right. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.